What is going on YouTube? Hayden back making another brand new Crypto TV episode. In today's video, we are going to be looking at XRP, Ethereum, Bitcoin, the S&P 500, and FX token or Function X as they are today's sponsor. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about their company as well as their cryptocurrency itself, looking at the technical indicators. Uh, but what we need to talk about right now is the fact that XRP actually managed to break through its bottom support and its support level at the $1.13 resistance. Now, we were using this to potentially break bullish and use it as a bounce off, which could shoot us back up to retesting a dollar and 22 cents. That unfortunately did not happen as we were waiting for the next buying opportunity to buy in here and potentially leverage it to the upside here. We discussed that if we were to break through a dollar and 13 cents yesterday, that we would actually end up shorting this coin to the downside here. So we are going to be covering more information about the way XRP is forming. We're also seeing a lot, and I mean a lot of consolidation right now within Bitcoin right now, but I do believe we are in the very near future future going to be headed back up to what I believe would be all time highs and then setting newer ones. So very excited to talk about that. Otherwise, guys, definitely make sure to take part in our crypto coin display giveaway. All you have to do is comment your favorite cryptocurrency down below, as well as subscribed. So I know that you're subscribed to the channel. And if you're not, you won't get one of these. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do to enter the free giveaway. Otherwise, definitely make sure to turn on post notifications, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And let's jump into today's episode. I want to give a huge shout out to Function X community for sponsoring today's episode. So guys, Function X was actually just listed on Coinbase and Coinbase Pro a few days ago, as you can see in this article. And now this is big news for their project and token. So FX is an Ethereum token that powers Function X, which companies a core blockchain cross-chain protocol and platform for decentralized applications. FX can also be used to pay for services such as smart contract creation and data storage, also to vote for network upgrades and for staking on the network. So guys, what's going on right now is the mainnet phase one launched July 7th and their staking offers 30% APY. 68% of their circulating supply was actually staked during this time. Now, the mainnet phase two will be launched October 13th, just a few days away with Pundi X crypto point of sale chain launching on the FX mainnet. BSC cross chain will launch in the last week of October. Tron Polygon cross chains will also be supported soon. And the third phase within the mainnet will be launching around December or January with DEX smart contracts, etc. The testnet for smart contracts has already been completed and 75 million FX tokens is allocated for developers to build dApps on FX mainnet. Also guys, Function X received the CES 2020 award for their blockchain phone prototype. Now the team members consist of David Ben K, the president who was the governing board member of the Ethereum Foundation and the CEO Zach Shea. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Now I do want to briefly look at Function X's governance token which is the FX or the cash symbol FX on TradingView and see how it's actually doing on the technical analysis. So guys, really quickly, I do want to just focus on Function X token. Now this coin has been listed on KuCoin for quite some time now, about two years. It actually started back in uh, early May of 2019. And we've seen basically an immediate reversal, you know, in the price once it was immediately listed, just a current drop in the token price. But what I'm starting to notice now is the potential of them starting to make collaborations and partners with these bigger cryptocurrency companies and projects, the prices are actually starting to rebound and, you know, start to head back to the upside here. So I was looking at things on the hourly, on the four hour, the daily, but ideally the best view I was able to get was honestly on the weekly charts. Now I was starting to notice the big resistance level that was stemming here. Uh, you can see it clear as day when we originally started to drop back in 2019. And this is currently acting as a resistance. Now, yes, prices were able to retest these levels. And I do believe we could see prices head up higher than that as we have in the past here, but very quickly and very rapidly. Ideally, we are starting to form some sort of uptrend, which is good now that we did find a bottom here. And this should slowly but surely lead us in the appropriate direction into, you know, 2022 of retesting once again, this resistance 
and eventually breaking through it and heading back to the upside here. As long as we're able to break through this ascending triangle and close above here, which we're starting to try to do now on the weekly as well as the daily charts, it should allow us to break through, stem above, and start to trend back to the upside here. So it is exciting and we are starting to see some progress right now within this cryptocurrency and within this company. And it might be a potential investment if prices start to head back higher and if we do decide to break through this resistance on the weekly charts and close below there. Otherwise, I do want to look at uh, the current coin market cap right now. As you guys can see, a quick refresh, top 10 cryptocurrencies, everything is consolidating. We're actually starting to see very, very, very little amounts of volume leave the market right now. We were at like $2.32 trillion in current coin market cap yesterday, currently only $2.3 trillion today. So it really isn't much that's leaving here, but you can see XRP is taking a pretty big hit. Uh, XRP and Solana lost about 5.72% in its total volume. And these other cryptocurrencies, for the most part, have lost about, I'd say, 5 to 6% on average with all these altcoins. Now, you can see zooming in on XRP, what we have to look at is quite interesting. So for quite some time now, we've been actually following an uptrend here on the coin, a very steep uptrend at that. But we were tracking just earlier a, a big resistance level at a dollar and nine cents and a dollar and thirteen cents. These were major resistance levels um, for XRP. And we discussed that the perfect opportunity to buy in if you're a moderate to aggressive trader was if we close above $1.09, which we did. And we also discussed if you're a conservative trader to wait until we close above $1.13 on the four hour charts, and we would buy in and leverage this to the upside here, which we've taken advantage of numerous times since we've mentioned it. And we've been able to leverage this all the way up to at the highest point of dollar 22 cents, slowly moving our stop loss up, which you can do by selling off on Bayard and then buying back in and just creating that stop loss. And we pretty much just scaled this to the upside here. Once we started to see resistances and the price started to drop, we did get liquidated, but we were able to lock in profits since the current point of buying in was between a dollar cents and dollar and 13 and the top was a dollar 21 to have a stop loss ever so slightly lower was just enough to capitalize our gains and lock in some profits here we started to develop another pattern which appeared to be another pennant flag which is very similar to what bitcoin's been doing i don't know if you guys can tell here bitcoin's been forming these pennant flags which tend to break up but xrp didn't and we discussed uh yesterday when we would be buying in and you guys pretty much noticed that the point of buying opportunity would be if we broke above of this downtrend here or below our support level. That would be the time to buy in and leverage for a buying in long or a short position right now. So as you guys can see, currently we actually broke bearish, which was, I was definitely surprised. I wasn't anticipating prices to break bearish, but when you start to, you know, stem outwards and you'll notice that we are yeah retesting resistances we retested the top which i want to talk about in a minute here uh, we started to hit our top resistance levels and prices are starting to correct lower we were also hitting overbought not only on our hourly but the four hour was also extremely overbought here and it would make it slightly higher uh, or harder to break bullish which is exactly why we were waiting for bottom supports to be retested and hopefully bouncing off a dollar 13 cents which didn't happen but because we did that and we closed the daily below or the four hour below our resistance we actually bought in for a small short opportunity it was very small as i do believe we are going to be bouncing off our bottom support at our moving averages on the four hour here very small here and then pretty much just rallying this back up because i don't think we're going to be closing below there just yet on the short term now i do want to throw out the potential of seeing where the bottom could be um, for our bigger Elliott wave on the long-term grand scheme of things. But we are in a small short position right here, which we were able to capitalize on when we closed below the four hour here for a small short down to the moving average. But now what we're anticipating is using this bottom support level at a dollar and five cents. And you can see we've used this dollar and five cents as a major, 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 major support level on the coin. So ideally for a conservative trader getting ready to buy into this coin or anticipating it like I would be doing, what I would wait, which would be a big short position, not necessarily small scalps, which we were doing here, but a very, uh, a very big leverage to the downside here would be waiting for this 
level to break here. If we break through a dollar and five cents and close below our moving averages, which you can clearly see here, we are going to be scaling back to the downside. You guys have to understand this because we broke through here and because we retested our top resistance at a dollar and 20 cents, which I'm going to show you now. So notice this pattern here and I'll move to the daily. We have been forming a massive Elliott wave triangle and maybe I was slightly off in the past here, but for the most part, I've been fairly accurate. We've had major uh, resistance levels at the top here. We've had a major support level at the bottom here. And ideally we've scaled down. We've retested, we've retested the bottom support at point A. And since then we've shot back up to point B and we were looking for a B to C confirmation, which would have been this movement here. Now, what was interesting was we actually bounced off bottom support, headed up higher, but we could very easily head back down to C now, eventually D and E. That is still a huge possibility. And it all pretty much depends on whether or not we are going to be closing our daily price below this support level and you can see how critical this was the second we closed below the support we saw a major dump all the way back down to 89 cents which is very doable right through our moving average here we just had a bearish flip on the daily here which is still a bearish signal for a correction to the downside so right now positions for the most part are either you just entered a very small one to trade in within today only on the hourly or the four hour charts to short this to the downside here because you saw that we closed below a dollar and 13 cents because you saw the hourly close us below a dollar and 13 right here you were able to short it to the downside because you saw it ever so slightly close in the four hour below a dollar 13 which would have been right at about a dollar nine cents you were able to short this down to a dollar and six cents very short term with potentially holding it for the continuation to hit a dollar five but right now you're pretty much not in a trade that's the understanding or i'm not in a trade that's the understanding and what we're looking for right now is to see how we're going to play out with this resistance be or it, that support level if we end up closing on xrp below this support level here at a dollar and five cents expect the continuation to bring us down to the bottom at point C. It's going to be bearish. It's not what we're anticipating and I don't want to see it. Ideally, it would be a bounce off here and then we're going to play the same, you know, system which is are we going to close above a dollar 9? Are we going to close above a dollar 13 and then shoot back up to a dollar 21? It's a very big possibility here, but if it starts to break uh breach us through a dollar and 5 cents, we know that this is going to be falling down to 89 cents. It's happened before and it would literally just be history repeating itself. So we have to play this out very carefully, which I will keep updating you guys for. Now, these other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, which has actually also broken through its four hour and this is only on the four hour daily, not so much. Um, well, actually, we did on the daily too. You can see uh, today we actually closed or yesterday we closed right below resistance here. We're trading inside of it. We're actually getting rejected once again from this ascending triangle. Things are starting to reverse lower and it's not necessarily good. Now, I don't necessarily like to trade short term Ethereum. Uh, long term hold, that's fine, but short term, not a big fan of it. We have pretty much just you know, left the market here. It's it's interesting to think, are we able to draw like other support and resistances? Not entirely. Um, but for Ethereum, it's just a difficult coin to track because we've broken out of here. We've almost started our own movement right here. But because we were rejected from this resistance here, there's a chance we could pull lower, ideally as low as our moving average, which is about $3,000. But I'm not one to do technical indicators on Ethereum because it just likes to do its own thing. It's pretty much extended entirely out of this ascending or symmetrical triangle right here, unlike some of these other cryptos. Now, looking at Bitcoin, you can see Bitcoin was in a bigger Elliott wave here, which we did ultimately decide to break bullish out of. And we are now closing above our top resistance at 55K. If this price continues, I don't really see much of a reason why we couldn't shoot back up to retesting 63K or at least forming some sort of motion here where we come back down, retest bottom at 50, and then head back up to all-time highs. It's a big possibility because we are becoming overbought as we speak. But ideally, we did break bullish. We went to almost the target. We're looking to see if we'll complete it. You can see the mouth of the opening is pretty much where we went to. You can see right here, this movement here is about the same distance that we went to currently right now. And ideally, we're looking for a much bigger play, which would be the mouth of this opening to the top. We're looking if we're going to complete this up to about 62 to 63K. Yeah, right here at 63K. So we're seeing if this is going to play itself out. Obviously, if prices at some point close below 55K again, there's a big chance on the short term we're going to have to short back to our moving average, which would be closer to 50K again, which, like I said, closing below here would swing us down. There's really not much support holding this point up from where we're currently at down to 
$50,000. So it would be a, a small blip down to here and then a potential rally back to the upside. But I think by the end of 2021, if not into 2022, we're going to see rallies to the upside here uh, up to all time highs. S&P 500, not looking too good. I'm hoping we start to get back inside this ascending fractal here. Otherwise, we're not going to have a good month. Um, you can see right now, if I, like I said, on the weekly as well as on the uh, monthly charts, they're all extremely overbought. Yes, we've traded inside this overbought market for quite some time, 2017, 2018, into, yeah, for quite some time here. And then 2013 all the way to 2015 has been us trading fairly overbought for the most part. We tend to trade fairly high up. That's usually where we trade for many years. You could see it even here. It's for a very long time from, you know, 95 all the way to 2000 for five years we we're trading overbought on the monthly. So the fact that we're just entering it isn't necessarily a worry, but we could see a dip back inside either our ascending fractal here because we are extremely overextended from this moving average. We have traded for the most part above it for quite some time. But at some points, we do come back into contact with it. So we are very extended right now, but it's really a hit or miss. It's hard to track and trace the S&P 500. Like right now, we look good retesting the support here. We've become slowly, uh, you know, more neutral in the playing field. But even on the monthly, we or the, sorry, the weekly, we're kind of up there. You know, we're kind of at the top here. And usually after retesting overbought, we tend to correct back lower, which we're starting to see right now. Ideally, on the weekly charts, us correcting back down, which would be a terrible drop, you know, it would swing us all the way back down to the top of this resistance, uh, about 3,800 points. Retesting its moving average here, which is now all the way up here. And then we'll probably head up, but the lowest we can go to is about 3,800. Otherwise, guys, uh, once again, huge shout out to Function X for sponsoring today's video. Definitely make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, smash the like button, and I'll see you in tomorrow's episode. Peace.